Hi guys and welcome to a new video. So in this video we're going to take a look at the Secure Mall SQ SW2 Mini Portable Recharging Spot Welder. Um, this is a little spot welder that literally fits in this small case and I'm going to review it thoroughly. It comes in this nice little case that looks like it's made from carbon but I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, when you open it up, you have your USB-C cable right here. Then we have a power brick. It's five volts, two amps. Then we have the welder itself right here. We have a foot pedal input, we have some control keys, we have the charging port, USB-C, great to see, and we have the output um, where the spot welding electrodes will be connected to. On top we have a LCD display, maybe even OLED, let me see, is it OLED? No, it's an LCD, it's a color LCD display, and here we have some, some of the specs. In here we have some, some electrodes out of copper. We have a little bit of nickel strip. Presumably, I would say it's 0.1 millimeter by 10 millimeters or something like that. That's just judging from the eyesight. I, don't ha I have not measured this yet. Uh, we have some stickers in here and a instruction manual. While the spot welder has a foot pedal input, it doesn't come with a foot pedal. You can buy one extra and add it to this thing. And I think that would be even worth it to try out. Uh, but it uh, mainly works on the automatic mode, where it basically, as soon as you put down the electrodes, it detects that you want to weld and initiates the weld. And I think as long as you're careful, the automatic mode works perfectly. But if you want to make sure uh, that it's a two-step verification process where you're, you know, using your foot to actually weld, I think the foot pedal is a nice add-on. And it's great that they put it on here. For the moment, we have the actual cable. Looks pretty thick, looks pretty sturdy. It's crimped. So not soldered, but crimped on this side. Let's see if the connections, yeah, they look pretty good. That looks really well made. So I would say let's put in some electrodes. So one thing that's really interesting already is they, they use a sort of clamping mechanism inside here instead of screwing in, instead of some screw getting tightened on here you just put these electrodes in here and just like that they're in looks pretty good to me now you can connect it to the device. Let's start this thing up. Let's get some nickel in here and let's try welding with this thing. So for this little experiment we're going to be using a double A battery and I'm going to be using the nickel strip that got delivered in the with the welder itself. So let's see how that looks. Let's turn on the welder and let's see if it actually welds. And yeah, it looks like it just did a weld. Let's see how, oh, that's, that's actually pretty good on there. As soon as these electrodes touch each other, this thing is going to start welding, right? So what I want to do right now is actually get some, get some little bit of tape. 
and just get it on here just like this i think this is pretty depleted already uh, it, it came with like 80 percent so let's charge it up and then see again how we how we're doing so let's try welding again I have now charged this thing up pretty well. We can increase the time to, let's increase the power to like 30 milliseconds or something. That looks pretty well to me. Yeah, that looks well. Basically rips out all the nickel when you pull on it and that's basically how it's supposed to go so i would say something around 30 to 40 milliseconds and also charge this thing fully up before you start it really helps out right here you can see that it's charging and yeah it works like this so you could just leave it plugged in if you want to that's really nice let's get the actual battery in here right here we have the battery um what i would always do this this is really dangerous to work on so put some sticky tape on the, on the back side just go like this and put it on here now when when you example leave something on here and you accidentally put your battery on there it's not going to short circuit immediately so what i would always do is get some tape and put it over each of these areas right here that this thing can weld let's get one of my biggest concerns out of the way and open this thing up and see if we can theoretically replace the battery if that is possible There are two cells in here. So there are basically two cells. They are on top of each other. And each one of them is around five amp hours. It's 10 millimeters high, 70 millimeters wide, and 80 millimeters tall. And you can find replacement cells for these online. And you can find them just like this with the tabs on the top. Now, would I recommend this welder to you? Well, the biggest issue I had was especially the heat. Welding for a longer time after like, I don't know, a hundred welds in a row, the electrodes were getting so hot that I couldn't handle it anymore and I had to put them down. So, and the inside of the spot welder got to around 50 degrees which is also very warm. If you're welding like a lot of batteries, like a big battery and you're doing this regularly, I wouldn't recommend this welder. Also one of the issues I had was the welds were not strong enough. Reason for that is the battery just doesn't provide enough amps. Usually I press down really hard on these electrodes when I try to weld and and usually the battery provides enough amps so that a lot of heat gets created on that point. But now the game is a little bit different because the battery actually has a way higher resistance than I was ever used to before and on any of my other spot welders. So all of a sudden you need way longer welding times and one thing I noticed, pressing down really hard actually makes the weld worse. 
because now you basically have very low resistance on the ele actual electrodes and higher resistance in the battery itself. So a lot of heat gets wasted inside the battery and doesn't get to the spot weld. So pressing down a little lighter actually helped my spot welding quality a lot. Also the cables on the spot welder are a little bit on the short side. Sometimes you have to lift the welder up a little bit and it kind of dangles in the air while you weld. But what I think is really positive is the fact that you can replace the battery and the fact that it's so small and it's really cheap. This spot welder will only cost you around 100 bucks, maybe around 70 to 80 euros. That's not including shipping, of course. And yes, while you can get a better welder for maybe 200 or 300 euros, the issue is you then need to buy an extra battery, you need to buy the charger for this battery, you need to buy all these things to get started welding. While in this case, you can just buy this little spot welder and get started right away. If you only have around 100 euros to spend and you want a portable spot welder, this is probably the best spot welder you can find. It's really good for the money, I have to say. The weld quality itself was not the best I've ever seen. But it was strong enough and in an electric vehicle a lot of other things will die before any of these spot welds will fail. So I think this thing is more than capable of doing any of that. If you need something cheap, something portable and something small and you want to get started right away and, and your battery is quite small that you want to weld and you don't have to do like a million welds, then I actually think this is quite a nice option. But I would also like to say that this thing is not the best if you want to build like the highest performance vehicles. I was welding 0.15 millimeter nickel. But I would say that's already on the, on the thicker side of what this welder is capable of. I would say 0.1 millimeter is probably where you get the best weld quality and 0.15 is already stretching it a bit. I welded with 50 milliseconds of timing and I have to say the welds got quite hot in that time. And you usually want to use a lower welding time because you want to use as little heat as possible. I didn't get any good welds when I went lower than 50 milliseconds. While on my AC welder or on my DC welder I could go down to like 10 milliseconds or even lower and still get a great weld. So you are restricted in different areas. You don't have the amps to go through, through a lot of nickel, a lot of heat will build up quickly and things like that. But if you're only building like a small battery with thin nickel, with 0.1 millimeter nickel, all of that stuff doesn't concern you. And this thing will be more than sufficient enough to weld anything you want in this case. So that's it actually. I hope you liked my review. If so, leave a like and maybe share it with somebody that also likes to build batteries and things like that. A new e-scooter video is almost done. I've added so many new cool features to my e-scooter and I'm really excited to show it to you guys. So I hope I see you next time. Until then, ciao!